This is the most successful scam show of all time. A hit in 45 countries around the world. The real hustlers have stolen cars. Hi. It's perfectly safe there. Burgled houses. Picked. Switched. And ditched. Antenna for the whole lot. They've carried out close to 500 scams and stolen over £1 million. And now they're back for an 11th series. Alex, Jess, and Paul, with new recruits, Polly and Jazz. Their job, to expose the tricks of the criminal's trade so that you don't get scammed. On tonight's show, guest hustler Shane Lynch is having a very bad hair day. It's not a bad idea. Jazz's prop bet is all in the balance. And Paul shows you why you should never play cards with some blokes in some bar. The next card I turn over is your card. Okay. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to see if they can cut it as con artists. But they'll have no clue what the scam is about and there are no dress rehearsals. So this is Sink or Swim. Today's guest hustler is actor, motorsport nut and boy's own hunk, Shane Lynch. I'm not a good guy for doing people out of money or anything of such, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to kind of learn a new side. My morals don't allow me to actually cheat people out of anything. If it's me dropping the bombshell on the person who's perhaps going to be devastated to losing something, then I'm going to feel terrible, absolutely terrible. Shane knows nothing about the role he'll be asked to play in today's scam. He's just been told to go to a local landmark and keep an eye out for a sexy swindler. Hello, you right, Shane? Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. How are you feeling? A little bit nervous. Oh, don't worry, we're going to take good care of you. <laughs> um, have you ever heard the expression, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Uh-huh. Yeah? Well, today, you're going to be helping us scam the same person, not once, but twice. Right. Now, you look gorgeous, but we do have a costume for you. I'm going to throw everything at you today. Let's have it. Today, we'll separate the boys from the men in Fool Me Once. It's lunchtime in a busy town centre and people are going about their business. These guys have just come from a bureau to change and that's why this guy is now the mark. Excuse me. Hello there, my name's Susie. Can I just ask, did you just exchange some money just now? You did. We're just doing an investigation. Can I ask you just to follow me, please? We just need to check your money for you. So there's some kind of undercover operation being carried out in the area. I think you're going to be able to help us. Thank you. Don't worry, you're not in any trouble. Don't worry about it. We're too... <laughs> it's a pretty weird request, but as it comes from a pretty lady, the mark does as he's asked and accompanies Jess. For any change, please. Sorry. Have a nice day. Ian, these gentlemen both. A little further up the road, they meet Jess's colleague, Alex. Green steel. Come with me, gentlemen. I just uh, a routine check. He's very confused, but still keen to help. He follows the investigators to their van. We've had reports of counterfeit money being passed to people, usually from exchange shops or other stores. We're trying to pinpoint where all this money is being leaked in. So all I need to do is just check that the money that you have is genuine. Hey, would you like to check the euros or the pounds? The pounds. OK, how much is that? 400. 400, OK. So Alex and Jess are investigating reports that local money shops are laundering cash by exchanging good currency for bad. 
Legit banknotes have watermarks to identify real cash from fake. These show up under UV light. Check this one. She said it's the first time that you've used after that shot. Alex checks if the cash is counterfeit, and he has good news. You're fine. Everything looks fine. So, but thank you for uh, letting us have thank a look. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers. The Mark's cash is all legit, so he's free to go. That beggar seems to be trailing the Mark. That's because it's Shane. A bit of an improvement, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is Shane's first big moment. He has to stop the guys dead in their tracks. Excuse me, gentlemen. My name is Alan Ladd. This is my colleague here. Hi there, here. operations manager. Daisy, you know. I'm pretty sure um, I just spoke these up there. Yeah? No, we need to have a word with you about them, actually. They're not actually who they say they are. Come with us right now, up, just literally up here. You're not in trouble, don't you worry. We just need to check everything good. that's happened. If you could just follow us up, my boss needs to have a quick word for yeah. you. The Mark's already been intercepted by two undercover investigators. Now he's being asked to cooperate all over again. Shane and Polly have their work cut out to convince him a second time. If he walks away now, the whole scam's over. No, no, calm down, you're not in trouble. You look fake to me, mate. No, listen, you're not in trouble. You look fake to me, pal. Sorry, this is my job. You're not in trouble, don't worry. We'll be two minutes just up here. We just need to make sure your money is OK. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Eventually, he agrees to go upstairs into a stakeout location being run by Paul and Jazz. You keep an eye, just let me know when they leave, yeah? It certainly looks like an official operation, but the Mark has clearly had enough of being ordered around. Your name is? Derek. Derek, how are you? Um, Hi, Jake, how are you? Well, do you know what's just happened? Uh, I don't know. Gentlemen, just examined your money. This guy here. This one here. So whatever money he's given you, if he swapped it, we're going to give you real cash back, all right? So you're covered. Paul's got some bad news about the cash Alex handled at the van. It's probably been swapped for fake notes. All right, how much did you give him? Under five All right, can I have a look at what he's given you back? No envelope, nothing like that, no? Yeah, very good. Well, as you can see, these are all fake. Nothing. So not only was Alex, the investigator at the van, fake, Nothing. he also swapped the Mark's cash for fake notes. There are clearly no watermarks visible under the UV light. OK, so you can see that's all fake. This is what a real bill should look like. All right, see that? Big difference, right? OK, unfortunately, it's under £500. Are you OK? No. Well, uh, have, have, a, have a seat then. Derek, have a seat. Right now, the Mark doesn't know who to believe. He just wants his money back. Did you suspect him? I suspect, of course I did. I suspect it. I suspect you was an off dragging off state. Well, I understand that. That's perfectly fine. Well, the good news is I'm going to give you cash to replace that. To help convince the Mark that Paul and his team are the real deal, he's going to refund the full amount in real cash. Do you mind passing that blue envelope over? Yeah, sure. um, boss, I just want to let you know I've got eyes on the two suspects. Now, the van's still here and they've just popped in. Give us account. a couple of minutes. Do me a favour before I give it to you. Please check it. I'll show you what you're looking for. Just looking for those stripes there. Yeah, that's it. Well, as far as I know, I'm be walking here. You might be the fake ones. This could be fake so money as well. Yeah. Fake well, ones, but let me. Maybe the genuine ones. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, having been stung once, the mark is suspicious. But Paul proves the money is real by showing him the UV watermarks. That's the cash from this. But here's the thing: the money the mark had with him at the beginning was real. The money he was given back was real, and the money that he's just been given by Paul is also real. What are the hustlers playing at? Well, as you can see, these are all fake. The trick here is in that UV lamp. Nothing at all, see that? There are actually two bulbs in the note checker. When Paul took the money from the mark, the UV bulb was off. Nothing, Nothing at all. Then he gave Polly a signal. This is what a real bill should look like. And she flicked the UV switch on, and that made the watermarks light up for all to see. Big difference, right? The Mark doesn't know it, but all the cash has been 100% real all the time. That's the cash from this. He's got all his money back, 
And now Paul's just about to make him an amazing offer. Are they still there? Yeah, the van's still there. They're actually still in the, in the cafe, so they've been there for a couple of minutes and probably having a coffee or something. So they'll probably be there for about five, ten. Um, did you get the sense that they were going to stay or go? I think they're hanging around for a while, myself. I've been there two, three hours. How much more cash do you have on you? Why? There's a £5,000 reward if we arrest them with more than £1,000. In return for helping Paul catch Alex and Jess red-handed, the Mark will get a whopping £5,000 fee. I don't know if they believe me, so yeah, there you go. Maybe if you poked me off the street first and gave me this, this small lab in the room about him just in there. I think about it that way, that's what you should have done. Well, that's the problem. He's pretending well, to be us. You must have seen that last year. Approached me when I came the first Oh, we watched the whole thing. We got the whole thing on camera. Because we have to catch him in the act. We're hoping you've got more than a thousand pounds. That's the truth. Sensing that they're losing the mark, Shane steps in to convince him. I mean, I can assure you you've been very safe hands, by all means. He'll be with you the whole time. Nobody will leave you alone with him. I guarantee it. No, no buying it, mate. Are you oh, sure? Okay. Unsure who he can trust, the Mark refuses to help. Unless the hustlers can persuade him otherwise, this scam's going nowhere. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> the proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. Okay, I'm gonna try a proposition bet for you. What I need you to do is, I need you to hold this note from both ends like this, and I need you to balance the 10p piece on its side like that, on the top here, and you have to hold it for three seconds, yeah? For three seconds. For three seconds. So I'll, I'll give it to you to have a try. If you can do it, I'll get you whatever your favourite drink is. If you can't do it, you have to get me one, yeah? Yeah? Okay, I think I could win. So Jazz is offering a round of drinks to his new friends if they can balance a coin in the air for three seconds on the straight edge of a banknote. It's not a bad idea. Oh, it's definitely there yeah, for, yeah. for a third of a second, maybe. <laughs> close, very close. I feel like you could do better than that for nearly <laughs> a second. It's still good, it's better than most. <laughs> OK, so what you do is you fold it in half and make sure there's a really well-defined crease at the top here. Open it up on the table, balance the middle of the 10p, there we go. One, two, three. three. <laughs> Success. Jazz creases the banknote to create a kink in the edge, then places the very middle of the 10p over the kink and slowly straightens it out. That's got to be worth a free drink. Going to the pub with your mates is a time when you should be able to let your guard down. But not when the hustlers are in town. Especially when these boys are fooling around with a deck of cards. And there it is. <laughs> and Jess is on the lookout for some likely marks. These guys look promising. They take a seat in direct line of sight of Alex, Jazz and Paul. It's painful. And Jess seizes her opportunity. Sorry, excuse me. And moves in. You had the boys getting ID'd at the bar, weren't you? Was it you? <laughs> Straight away, their attention is drawn to the commotion in the corner. Looks like a lot of fun. Come on over. I'm not, I'm sorry. Come on, come on over, it's fun. Have you, it's, yeah, come on over. It's, um... Sure. Yeah, Susie. Come on, they need to go over. Invited to join in, Jess takes the marks over to the table so that everyone can get friendly. Can I just say, I'm not actually betting anything now. Posing as Jess's colleagues, they're all on a works night out. Do you play? Uh, what, what do you play? Uh, poker, blackjack. Uh, These guys seem up for a gamble, and that makes them the marks. It's my lucky night. 
But Lady Luck won't be on their side in the smudge. Take a card out. Take a card out. Just take a card. Anyone. That one. Look at it. Don't let me see it. Okay. To break the ice, Paul shows the guys a card trick. All right, put it on top of Okay. He's actually trying to find out if they're carrying cash and willing to put their money where their mouths are. I don't see very well anyway, but I'll do it yeah, by touch. Buy, yeah. Paul's trying to find the Mark's card. The mm. next card I turn over is your card. Okay, this is fine. The Mark thinks he's missed it, as it's already on the table. And how much would you bet? No, the, I'll bet 20. Without even looking at it. I'm happy to match that. 20 quid. <laughs> Hold on, no, no, no. Match that. Match 20 quid. Yeah. Next card I turn over is your card. Yeah. Fair enough? Right, okay. Fair enough? If it is, I think happily have that money. But if it isn't, I'll All right. take that, right? There you go. That's the next card I turn over. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's impressed. There you go. There you go. I'm there. He's fallen for a simple card trick. But more importantly, he's shown he's willing to play for money. And that's exactly what the hustlers are looking for. <laughs> do you want to win your money back? Yeah. Paul gives him another chance to win. All you got to do is find that. It's called find the lady. Find the right? lady. That's queen. So I've got to find it, yes. Uh, anybody, actually. We, you yeah. you want to play? You haven't yeah. put any money down. Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, here's the idea. I'm going to mix these up like that. All you have to do is decide where the queen is. All right? Yeah, okay. and you get the queen. Paul's going to play the classic three-card Monty, also known as find the lady. There you go. Where would you say it was? I'd say it was there. How no, much you bet? How much you bet? How much you bet? It's over the far side. It's not. Don't Drive lose on. your money. I watched it, mate. Jazz's role here is to be a rubbish gambler, and he's good. I saw it. You think it's there? That's not it. Where do you Just turn that one over. Turn that one over. Dude, what is wrong with you? Alex gets it right. Mate, do me a favour. Lend him your glasses. I'm putting money down this time. All right, move around. Okay. Okay. So you should know where it is. Any, anybody wants the bet? You want twenty quid? Where? There. On this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, I want this one. Don't try and check. No, uh, 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 this one. I'm not sure. This you know. one. All right, uh, easy. And Alex gets it right again. The marks can see how easy it is to win. Yeah, you sure? yeah, you have a shot. I'm not playing. Have a shot. No. Just... Maybe the lady will be good at finding the lady. I never get it right. Just guess where it is. Oh, not for money. Not for money. <gasps> no! Ah! You should have put some money. I know. The marks are watching with interest, but they're not getting their money out yet. The hustlers make it look easy, but the marks are right to be wary, because this is a game you can never win. You bet twice now. Whoa, 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 cards everywhere. But Jess is just about to convince them that they simply can't lose. The distraction has been staged to let Jess mark the queen with a dab of lipstick. She then makes sure one of the marks knows all about it. Oh, pick them up. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm fine. It may be a tiny smudge, but both marks can clearly see which card is marked. How much? Now knowing they're onto a sure thing, they go straight for their wallets. I'll let you both. You can both put your money together. Oh, but what's that? Is that is that a red one? Yeah, red one. I'll put forty down. On that one there. Uh, which one are you going on? You're going on that one. There's now around a hundred quid on the table. All their money is on the marked card. As long as you go in one, I'll take all the money together. Right? On that one. Which one? On that one. If that's all you got, turn it over. But it's a disaster. That's not the queen. I mean, that's, that's clubs there. They're stunned. <laughs> And Paul's clean them out. Well, look, I'll come back. We'll do it again. You've got any more money? Come on, get some more get, money. I'll get, get, get a chance my, to win. One by one, the hustlers leave the table. You know what? That's I was 100% sure. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. The marks try to work out what just happened to their beer money. Here's what they didn't see. Jess made sure the marks saw her marking the queen making them think it was impossible to lose. I put 40 down on that one there. But by thinking they could hustle the hustlers, they were actually waving goodbye to all their cash. Okay, sorry, uh, you're good. No, no. Just before the crucial final hand, Alex distracted the marks and Paul switched all three cards for a duplicate set from his pocket. 
The only difference was that now the losing three of clubs had a lipstick smudge on the back. Once this guy turned it over, Alex marked the remaining cards to make them think the lipstick had accidentally smeared across all three, losing them all their money. I saw a night out uh, in Edinburgh, I sort of cut short of it after losing a bit of money in the bar. I feel gutted and feel like I've made a muggle, to be honest. The worst thing is we can't get a chance to win the money back. There's always a sense if you lose something, you get the chance to get back, but we don't put me off gambling for life. This scam is very convincing because the mark thinks he's getting one over on Paul. But if you can see the lipstick mark on the back of the card, you can be sure that everybody else can see it too. Three Card Monty is the granddaddy of crooked gambling games. There are hundreds of variations out there, but the result is always the same. Everyone loses. If you think you know the secret, remember that a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and it could cost you a fortune. Earlier today, Shane Lynch went from pop star to tramp. Excuse me, gentlemen. My name is Alan Ladd. He went undercover to persuade this Mark to follow him to a hidden stakeout location. There you are, so you need to come with us right now, up, just literally up here. You're not in trouble, don't yeah, worry. We just need to check everything good. that's happened. Paul then tried to persuade him to be part of a sting operation to catch fraudsters Alex and Jess. There's a £5,000 reward if we arrest them with more than £1,000. But unsure who to trust, this guy just wanted out. No, I'm not buying it, mate. Okay. Is this scam already all over in Fool Me Once, part two? Fraudsters Alex and Jess are waiting at their van. Inside the stakeout, Paul and Shane are still trying to talk the mark into taking part in the undercover sting. Sir, look at me. I'm telling you, there's a £5,000 reward. It's yours if you want it. That's what we do whenever we catch these guys. We've got to get it off the street, but we can only do it for a certain amount, or you'll not go to jail. Guaranteed you're in no danger. None. Guaranteed. Well, you know, he suspects something then because he's already seen you today. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're going to go. Well, here's what I want you to do. Just go up to him and say, look, I've taken out more money. Could you check it for me? Just look like you're a complete sucker. The minute he switches the money, we'll step in. OK? Derek, there's a £5,000 reward. OK? OK. No problem. You're a good man. Finally, he's been convinced. Will you buy me a drink? If I'm right. If I grand, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Can I see how much you've got? What I'll do is I'll put it in an envelope. Mm -hmm. Okay. The minute he opens the envelope, take him. All right. What do you have? The mark gets out the rest of the cash he's carrying. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. For evidence purposes, Paul marks the cash with a UV tagging spray so it can be identified later in court. Uh. All the marked money goes into an envelope. I'm also going to give you a microphone. Put that at the side. It wouldn't be a proper undercover sting without a wire. Uh, yes, there is one. Is, just put it in here. So drop this in here. I'll do it for you. Hold on to this for me. OK. Um, right, I think we better go. Stay close. Please stay close. And just do what he tells you. Let's go. Yeah, Quick. Don't get involved at any point when I go in for the arrest. Stand back, let me do what I have to do, okay? The instant... Stay safe, we stay safe, it's all good. The instant he opens the envelope, okay? Okay. All right, very important. Hurry up. The mark follows Shane down the steps oh, and out onto the street. Everything. Recording everything. So the mark is going to entrap Alex by letting him switch the rest of his cash for counterfeit notes. The whole thing is being recorded and undercover investigator Shane will be on hand to apprehend the fraudsters. He does what he's been told and takes over three grand of holiday cash to Alex and Jess. Yep. Oh yeah, I'm just going to spin it around. But Alex wants to turn the van around before he checks the cash. Uh, no, just come with us. He seems a bit twitchy. Maybe Shane hanging about is putting him off. Yeah. 
Alex isn't turning the van around. Instead, he's out of here. Still have the envelope. Don't, don't move, don't move, don't move. Shane legs after them, telling the mark to stay where he is. Not sure what to do, the mark stays put. Of course, Shane isn't really giving chase. He runs round the corner and jumps straight into the waiting van. It's coming back, Mark. The Mark isn't concerned about being left waiting in the street. After all, he's still holding the envelope full of his cash. Meanwhile, upstairs, it's not so much stakeout okay. everything. as get out. It looks like no one is coming back. Fearing the worst, the Mark opens his envelope. I haven't done that. It's a paper in It was very quick, and very deceiving. And I don't know how they put the paper in or how it was changed. Never seen it. Pile of receipts from £3,000. So how did the Mark end up with a handful of worthless paper? After marking the money, Paul put it in an envelope and sealed it. I'm also going to give you a microphone. Whilst being asked to wear a wire for the sting, the Mark didn't notice Paul switching the envelope with real money for an identical one full of newspaper sitting on the bookshelf. Uh, yes, there is one. Shane also let Paul know the Mark wasn't paying attention. And from that moment, the cash was as good as gone. The kind of hustles that go on in the real world, I think it's very, very easy to fall victim. As a, as a witness myself today and a participant myself today, I think I very easily would be one of those victims. A shadow. I, I could be a mark as much as everybody else could be, but I think without a doubt, you need to be aware of what's around you. This is a classic case of compliance. The Mark is dealing with people he thinks are officials, and although it goes against all his basic instincts, he has little choice but to do exactly as they say. Working in an undercover role takes real skill and professionalism. The police and security agencies are never going to come along to you as an amateur and ask you to get involved in an undercover sting operation. If something like that ever occurs, step back from it, ask for their ID, they won't be able to produce it and walk away. Today's guest hustler is TV presenter and Radio 1 DJ, Nahal. I'm in Glasgow, unless it's something particularly Scottish themed involving tossing cables, playing bagpipes, I have no idea what is going to happen to me. Hello? Hello. Can you walk across the bridge and then down the footpath and I'll meet you at the point? All right, cool. This programme is amazing. I look at it and I've just seen, you know, some of the guys who've done it before. I just thought, can I do that? Could I get in that situation and act it out? Could I look them in the eye and lie to them? I don't know. And now today I'm going to get a chance to find out whether I can, so I'm really excited, yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we're yeah. going to be doing. Today, we're going to be pulling off an audacious scam. OK, we like that word. The question is, how do you sell something that doesn't actually belong to you without stealing it in the first place? No idea. No idea. <laughs> Shall we get going? Yeah. I'll tell you more about it. Yeah. Nahal's going to have to achieve a double-double. Two scams with two marks in two rooms. The hustlers have hired some rooms in a luxury country hotel. The guys lead Nahal as Jess waits outside reception to meet a man about some art. Hello. This guy's come here to buy a highly collectible sculpture and that makes him the mark. Jess is going to be doing an awful lot of leading people around today, and timing will be crucial. Right now, she's taking the mark to Paul. He's playing the role of art dealer Rob Marks. 
He's selling a piece that's worth a lot of money. I'd just like to take a seat. Rob Marks, this is Peter. Oh, Peter, how are you? That's a bike. Have Thank a you. seat. Thank you. <laughs> you find the place okay? Uh, yes. While Paul entertains the mark, Jess goes back to meet some guards from a security firm in charge of transporting the precious item from a local gallery to the hotel. They've been told it's being used for a magazine photo shoot and for insurance purposes, they mustn't let it out of their sight. Jess walks the officer through the grand hall. I think, I think that's the piece arriving. It looks like security, but Susie's just... And right there. past Paul and the watching Mark and into a corridor leading to the room where Nahal, Alex and Jazz have set the stage for the first part of the scam, the photo shoot. Nahal's first role is to play the long-suffering assistant to Alex, a temperamental photographer prone to hissy fits. Jazz is also getting an earful as the apprentice. I mean, you should know whether we do need bad lighting or not. Is that the... Hi. Oh, great, it's here. Because it's being photographed for a magazine, the piece has been loaned by the owner, so it's free for the day. And there it is, three beautifully cast birds in flight. Made from solid bronze, it weighs a ton and is worth a five-figure sum. All right, good. Okay, now I just wanted everybody to get off my set in front of my life. Being the artist that he is, photographer Alex insists on everything being just right before he starts shooting. So I ask you to take that outside. If you... The prima donna photographer sends one of the guards out of the room. Would you just like to take a seat there? Thank you. Thank you. There's uh, some papers or something you can have a look at. The other guard is left alone to keep his eye on the sculpture, making him the second mark. If it goes, don't worry, I'll get it. He's asked to sit out of the way of the photo shoot, in fact, for this scam to work, it's vital that he doesn't move from that chair. That's so good. I'm just going to change this light. Do you want... Don't walk past there! Everybody stop crossing the light. We're pressed for time. All right. Sorry. Just don't cross. Sorry. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, OK. Photographer Alex is starting to boss his underlings around. Nahal and Jazz definitely aren't getting an easy ride from their boss. No, back, back. back okay, sorry. Sorry. It's like working with a bunch of amateurs, honestly. It's not funny. Sorry. Oh, that's kind of working for me there. Jay, what do you think? Yeah, it is. The silhouette is what we're going for. Yeah. Yeah. A nice yeah, silhouette. Yeah. Let me just shoot a couple of test ones. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. It's okay. The Mark's forced to witness the outrageous workplace harassment. And though he can't see the sculpture, its silhouette is plainly visible to him on the screen at all times. Huh? I don't need that, Jay. You know I don't need that. Just this checking. Is, this is not your first shoot. Okay? No, I was just checking. So just, just try and keep up. Looks like it's going to be a long wait. Back in the main hall, the other Mark is getting anxious right. to get on with his deal and buy some valuable art. Okay, I'm just into the ghetto. Carrying that much cash on me. I feel very nervous about it. That's kind of why we do this here rather than the middle of town, you know. Well, the sooner I get the money off me, I'll feel much better. The sooner I have your money in my hands, I'll be a lot well, happier too. I'll go along with that. <laughs> okay. Here's Jess to help the Mark part with his money a bit quicker. So, Rob, just let you know, they're going to be about another 10 minutes. Do you two want to come through to the whiskey room? It's a bit more comfortable there. I think that sounds perfect. Is that okay? So, why don't you bring your, uh, why don't you bring your whiskey through? Yes. Do you want me to take that for you? Jess makes sure to give him the first-class treatment as she takes him to a meeting room that happens to be right next door to the photo shoot. Ah, uh, lovely. Right. Jess leaves Paul to talk business with the Mark. She heads straight over to let Alex know everyone is in position. Jay, be quiet. Just for one second, let me do my job, all right? Can I get in my own light? Yeah. Sorry, mate, I'll get it. Um, so if you wanted any water or anything to eat or drinks? Um, no, we're OK, actually. Thank you. That's the signal to Alex, Jazz and Nahal. It's time for the next part of the scam. The hustlers plan to sell this very sculpture to the mark in the next room. But what about that guard? Just take that off for a second. I want to clean the plinth. This is where Nahal comes in. He removes the sculpture from the plinth. 
it up from there. Just bring it over here. Sensing the sculptures on the move, the guard is on his feet and starts moving around. This is a bad thing. It's vital the mark stays in his chair by the door, because when he's seated, he can't see the other door, which is the one Nahal plans to slip through. You're all you're right to take a seat, mate. Jazz tries to convince him to sit down, but he's having none of it. Clearly, it can't be in two places at once, so to keep the mark fooled, Alex quickly replaces the bronze with a worthless cardboard replica. Just me. Nahal lifts the statue and makes for the door, as Alex and Jazz keep obscuring the mark's view. So I don't know where the They're just are. here, okay? Just, you're trailing everything. Just come back when you've got the black stuff. Done. So can I ask you to have a seat? Sorry, I know it's, but you're just reflecting lights if, off there. If it goes, don't worry, I'll get it. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Alex keeps the mark busy. As long as he stays where he is, they'll be okay. But if he looks behind that screen, the game will be up. Nahal now only has moments to change for the next part of the scam. The photographic assistant is becoming a security guard to take the sculpture through to the adjoining room and one admiring mark. Come in. Wow. Yes, of course, Mr. Marks. I'm not as strong as I look. <laughs> that really is stunning. I've seen pictures. This is a, isn't it amazing? And the photographs don't do it any justice at all. I mean, it's totally amazing. The scene's now set for the sale. Coming up, one security guard gets restless, and one happy customer becomes very much not happy. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> The proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. I've got a challenge for you. Here is three shot glasses and ten coins. They're just normal coins. So I want you to put an odd number of coins in each glass, but you have to use all ten coins. If you can do it, I'll buy you a drink. If you can't, you've got to buy me a drink. So to win a drink, Holly's friends need to divide all the coins so there's an odd number in each shot glass. It just doesn't add up. Okay. Can I start with you, yeah? Yeah, yeah? So an odd number in each glass. One, two, three. Three in that one. And they have to be inside the glass, yeah? They have to be inside the glass, yeah. Three. So three. Think of other odd numbers. Yeah, yeah, the odd numbers aren't the hassle. <laughs> 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 like that? You have to oh, have right, a okay. coin in every glass. Uh, I don't know. No? So. Someone else want to have a little go? No idea? No idea. Any idea? <laughs> okay, right, so if I can do it, you'll buy me a drink, right? Definitely. Yeah? Okay, so one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So there's three in there, three in there, and three in there. So I put four in there, and then add that, seven in there. <laughs> Odd numbers. <laughs> it's easy when you know how. To start, Polly puts three coins in each glass and is left with one spare. She adds it to one of the glasses and then puts it into one of the others to make seven coins. So there's three in this one, three in this one, and seven in this one. All odd numbers, Polly wins. The bar's that way, and mine's gin and tonic. It's a late summer's evening, and judging by Jess's travel bag, she's off on holiday. But before she leaves, she's keen to make a little spending money in the ringer. Jess homes in on her first mark. Excuse me, can you tell me please? I've just found this ring. 
just down there, just waiting for a cab. I think it might be, well, I'm pretty sure it's that one in the window, and I don't really know what to do. It's a jeweler's. I mean, it's, in, it's inside there, so... I mean, it's, it's an engagement ring, obviously. I don't know what to do. I'm really late. I've, I've got to go get a slave. So, Jess has found a ring outside a jeweler's. A poster in the window is offering a £500 reward to whoever finds it. But she's on her way to the airport, so can't come back to claim the cash. Maybe one of these guys could help her out. I'd, I'd love that cash, but I'm not here. I've got to go. <laughs> I've got to go. Sounds genuine. How could this possibly be a scam? After all, there's the poster inside the closed shop, and it seems like Jess has found the ring in the picture. It must be for real. Why did I have to go today? <laughs> hey, damn it, damn it! Uh, well, I could drop it off tomorrow night. I'll be in tomorrow. Yeah? I could pick it up, yeah. It'll be open then, won't it? So he's agreed to help her get the ring back, but it's a shame she's going to miss out on all that lovely reward money. Unless... If you've got something on you that you can give to me now, then at least I've got something out of it. Then you can t get the £500 tomorrow. I don't even get any cash on you. Oh, really? Uh, but it sounds like he's broke. See if you give me your number or something. I'm sure you're a lovely guy, and so I totally I'm trust you. I don't really want to be giving my number out. She doesn't want to chat on the phone. She just wants his money. I take it back? No, no, of course, of course. Even if it's like a tenner or something. Tenner? Sure. Surely he'll hand over 10 quid, knowing he'll get the £500 reward. Oh, what, a cash machine? Success. He's off to get some cash. Back in two minutes. Hurry up, boys. I've really got to go. I'm so late. <laughs> oh, thank you. And there's the cash. I think the opening times are on the door. It's only a tenner, mind you, which hardly seems fair, as the mark can get the 500 quid reward for the ring tomorrow. Thank you, Hearn. Thank you. Bye. At least it'll pay for a cab to the airport. The Mark walks off thinking he's just struck gold. A few minutes later, here comes a familiar looking lady stepping out of a familiar looking cab at the exact same spot. And she's only gone and found another ring. Excuse me. Hiya, sorry, can you help me please? I just found this ring. And once again, she singles out a Mark. Once again, Jess draws attention to the poster. In here, and I've got to go. I'm shooting off, like, in two minutes. Can you help me? All right, and we can handle it tomorrow. Right. He seems keen to help, but what's in it for Jess? Have you got anything on you now that maybe you could give to me that at least I get something out of it? Would you want to tell me what you want? Well, I mean, I don't know, 100 quid or something? <laughs> I'm too... <laughs> Now that's more like it. Thank you, hun. Enjoy the rest of your night. I've really right, got to okay. go. No bother, Enjoy no yourself. Thank you. Right, Bye. Care. Jess leaves with the Mark's £100. What's really convincing about this scam is that poster inside the jeweller's window. So how did the hustlers get it in there? Earlier, Jazz spotted a jewellery store with a nice big window and went inside posing as a young designer looking to stick up a poster to advertise his charity exhibition. With the manager's permission, Jazz stuck posters up inside and outside the shop window. Later, when the shop closed, all Jess had to do was quickly remove the poster on the outside, revealing a hidden reward notice printed on the back of the poster on the inside. And a constant supply of cheap fake rings means she can hit Mark, me. Hi, after sorry, Mark, just found this ring. Oh, after so, Mark. This one here. Hi, can you just take me around the block? I'm actually raging because my judgement of people is usually a lot better. I'm actually raging, I'm actually furious. Nobody, but nobody gets one over on me. Nobody. I don't allow it to happen. I'm too protective of myself. And it's clearly fake. This seems like a win-win situation to most marks. The young lady makes some money, they make some money, the rightful owner gets their ring back. What's not to like? Variations on the ring scam exist all over Europe and they all depend on the victim believing that a worthless ring is actually the real deal. If you're not an expert, be careful who you listen to and remember that a promise of reward might not be worth the paper that it's written on.
Earlier today, Radio 1 DJ Nahal helped the hustlers pull the wool over two different marks in the same scam. They've borrowed a piece of art and somehow they plan to make money from it. What a piece. The catch? It's not theirs to sell and neither Mark knows that yet. It's only a matter of time before the security guard notices that the valuable sculpture he's looking after isn't where he thinks it is. In Two Rooms Part 2. Alex is still shooting a silhouette fake of the expensive sculpture, whilst Paul's busy talking about the real one right next door. Meanwhile, Jess is going to bring someone new into the mix. And finally, Nahal's still looking mean playing the security guard. Bob, your volume is here. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi. Rob. As with all major art deals, it's important to have an independent valuer authenticate the piece to assure the mark that he's buying a genuine work of art. It's just arrived, actually. We're still kind of taking it in. Just like that sculpture, this guy's 100% genuine and he gets straight to work. Alan Glassman? Yes. Before parting with any cash, the mark needs to be completely convinced he's getting value for money. So what's this lump of bronze really worth? You'd be struggling to pick up anything like this retail for less than £10,000. The sculpture is worth £10,000. The valuer has given his assessment and Jess leads him away before anyone asks any awkward I questions. I ordered you a cab. It's going to be here in about one minute if you're that, still... Next door, that cardboard cutout won't fool the guard forever. So Alex and Jazz decide it's time to make an exit. You know, how long I mean, has he experienced that? Does it take to go to the van? The frustrated photographer goes off to track down his useless apprentice. Do you want me to change any of these over? No, no, leave it as it is. Just stay there. Thank take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The buyer is now totally convinced the bronze is the genuine article. So all that's left is to close the deal. So, um, I, I hate to do this, but there is the matter of money to discuss. Um, you said to me you brought cash. Half cash and half cash. Yes, he, he mentioned that. I was kind of hoping it was all cash, but that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Ah. Cool. ka -ching. Very good. I think that um, our security firm can drive it for you. I'll you, take your word for it, it'll be secure anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, so far they haven't lost anything yet. Have you lost anything yet? Not to the best of my life. Yeah. I never realised it had an eye for something. The hotel manager wants a word with Mr. Marks. Sorry to disturb. Uh, you mentioned putting something in our safe and it's on a time lock. He does look an awful lot like that photographer from next door, only in different clothing. You've got a window of five minutes. All right. Uh, yeah. Would you be so good as to make sure that goes into my box? Paul hands the five grand cash to Nihal. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry Thank you. Sorry that. to disturb. Alex will show him to the safe. Um. Oh, sorry, could you sign these um, documents so I can get them faxed off as soon as And possible? here's another interruption. Jess has some urgent business that requires Paul's attention. I'll be right back. I'll see you in a couple of minutes, okay? okay? I'll bring you another whiskey. Yeah. In fact, this is the getaway. And that just leaves Jazz to get the hell out of there. Right under the mark's nose. Anytime you're ready. I've got <laughs> Unaware that he's just been hustled, the mark is left to take in the full grandeur of the newly acquired bronze sculpture. And next door, the guard is still at his post, but he fills his colleague in at the first opportunity. He can't believe the 10 grand sculpture he's been guarding for the past hour is actually a worthless cardboard cutout. Following the only other exit from the room, 
he runs right into the other mark. Hello, hi. Did you see a couple of guys come through here, did you? Uh, yeah, uh, they weren't here with me. Right. At least the sculpture is still in the building. But the guard can't work out what's going on. He goes to find his mate, leaving the other mark very puzzled. Hi there, sir. Hi. The security firm has been tasked with keeping the statue safe, so that's the boss's first priority. Well, the have been bought. My friends, friends bought this. we are looking after this for some photographers. Let's get it photographed. Well, there was a security company there who was going to deliver it. We are the security company that delivered it. To here? Yes. And we are looking after it today. Right, and you're going to deliver it to the address that I gave the, the other guy? No, we are looking after it for the photographers and then it goes back to the supplier. <laughs> Chris, could you put that back in, please? <sighs> Be careful with it, it's very valuable, can't we? Oh, no, it's valuable. We just have to be done at £5,000. Right, if you could put that back in first and then we'll get the hotel manager, please. Zeke. Be careful with it. So how did the hustlers manage to sell something that they didn't own in the first place? Back in the den, Polly arranged to hire the piece for the day and arranged to have it delivered to the hotel. She carefully mocked up the shape of the bronze on some card and made a cutout that could be used to fool the security guard into thinking it was still on the plinth. When in fact, the whole time it was in the room next door, being sold to another unsuspecting mark. The valuer simply added authenticity to the deal. You'd be struggling to pick up anything like this retail for less than 10,000 pounds. And after that, it was easy. Actually, I could cry at the moment, to be quite honest with you. I just feel so angry inside. It's just been a day for me, from start to finish. When the security guards come in to take away the piece, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't know what to think. In fact, I wanted to put my head through a wall. I'm just so bloody angry. For you to live your life not wishing to be hustled, you would always have to think the worst of people. But, if, you know, if someone was trying to sell me, um, you know, three birds, sculpture made of bronze, I would make damn sure that there was no other room. I would do it out in the open. If I saw a security guard, I'd go, who do you work for? If there was um, a fella with glasses, a really pretty woman and someone who looks kind of Greek, I'd run a mile, quite frankly. Do you know what I mean? I'm gone. The grand surroundings give this scam an air of authenticity. Until the very last minute, both parties believe they're taking part in a legitimate piece of business. And by the time they realize they're being scammed, we're a couple of miles down the road. This is not amateur hour. This is the kind of scam that professional criminals will set up to obtain high value goods. If you're in that market, you should know who you're dealing with. And if you're asked for cash, that should ring an alarm bell. Make sure you understand the kind of transaction you're going into from the outset.